I can barely hear you. Barely hear me? How's that? It's a little better. Let me try something. Speak to me, Lord. Now, how's that? Uh, I don't know. What do you got to say? I've got nothing. Just testing the levels. Sound okay? Sound bad? Sound worse? No, you sound good. I got gotcha. you. Sounds all right? Yeah. All right. I had like this external microphone I was trying out, but I think I have to get too close to it and I'm just not not in a position to You're not a physician or a technician? No, 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 I'm not I'm not a physician to do this right now. I'm kind of lounging. It'll work it'll work if I'm sitting at a desk, but I'm not I'm just like lounging on the bed. Of course, my internet is incredibly slow for some reason right now. Oh, is it? I don't know. Well, no, the Skype is working. I just tried to bring up Blabbermouth and BNR to have them on hand when we talk, but they're just like tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Wait, are you still there? You are. Yeah, I'm still here. Go ahead. Are you recording? I am recording. So, yeah, I've got Blabbermouth. I have nothing. Okay, well, I was going to say we were going to talk about metal videos because uh, I just happened to find that Excite video channel on my Skype, or uh, not Skype, but uh, Roku. I've seen it before and all it had was 80s and just pop and just nonsense, but now they have like a selection you can pick hard rock and metal. Oh. So I picked it the other night thinking, okay, it's just going to have like Bon Jovi and Huey Lewis and stuff like that. I'm like, no, it was like Judas Priest, like. Metallic. I'm like, holy shit, there's a lot of cool videos on here. It was like it got into a little not death metal quite yet, but mostly like Dio except and I was like, fuck, that's cool. Yeah, man. And it actually played your band, Dangerous Toys. I didn't know they even had a video, of one of your favorites. <laughs> yeah, scared. What, what is it? it? Was it scared or teasing pleasing? I think it was the the latter, teasing pleasing. I can't remember. Oh, you gotta see scared. That's a great song. You know, uh, Jason McMaster, the singer of Dangerous Toys, has a a podcast. It's called Talk Louder. It's pretty good. Just check it out. That's what you were saying. He's your one of your favorite people in the world, huh? Well, I don't. I wouldn't know if I'd say that. He's cool. Like, I mean, he was, you know, not you know, not only Dangerous Toys, but he was part of like kind of like the beginning of tech metal like the first like band that i think referred to themselves as technical metal which was watchtower from uh austin i believe no actually they might have been san antonio but yeah a lot, a lot of the watchtower is very influential in the tech metal scene they're like the first and the master was a singer for that band and then he left to join Dangerous Toys and kind of try to get in on that sort of sleaze rock uh, thing. That was so big. So I prefer them to Guns N' Roses, you know, if we're talking about ginger lead singers. I'll take Dangerous Toys over them any day. I'll take anybody over Guns N' Roses. Yeah, I mean, they're not horrible. I just, I don't think. Well, I've never, actually, never got a fan of them. Axel seems to be kind of a prick sometimes, and then uh, there was a, actually, oh, you said you bad. read Paul Stanley's biography, his autobiography, his first one. Um, do you remember yeah, that story about Slash in there? Yeah, I think, okay, so I, I don't want to get it wrong, Slash but, it, but Slash wanted to get a, uh, a an endorsement through BC Rich, right? And I think Paul Stanley Something. was his contact. Something so like Paul that. helped him out, and then he like kind of turned around and backed him. I don't don't remember what. I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to be. Uh, I know. can't remember now, but it was something to do with. Uh, I guess he was just kind of talking trash on Paul and Kiss. Yeah, and, and that and it was like after Paul Stanley got him, like a, a an endorsement deal with BC Rich. But we've talked about this before. It's like, you know how sensitive kiss can be especially paul it might not have been something meant to be so bad but then again maybe it was i don't know i guess calling him old or something i don't remember i don't fucking remember it was a while ago but yeah something no, like I, I just i you know like just the guns and roses thing i i don't 
you know how there's those bands and we may have talked about it before there's bands that have like that by all the metrics right you should like them like they tick all the boxes that yeah, you know like uh, for you it was scorpions you don't like the scorpions very much yeah scorpions <laughs> and and but even to a more extent like or Guns even and Roses. Roses. you know even more so because like i can actually listen to some of the early scorpion stuff and and be like yeah this is pretty badass but there's nothing in guns and roses that really really did anything you know for me but yeah they're they're but they're one of those bands like well they should you know they have everything I like, you know, I'm a total 80s, you know, 80s sleaze metal guy. And they should have scratched that itch, but they didn't do anything for me. And I don't know why that is. I wonder if there's like a term for it. But what would be your band that, that you'd say like, by every metric, they should, JR would like them or should like them. <laughs> well, but they don't, they just don't bands, do anything. Uh... It doesn't even have to be a metal band. Like it could be like a, one of those, shitty industrial bands you love so much but you know just just a band that like like hits every hits every like metric for what you want you know in music but you're just like eh, i don't know i don't like them i don't know why uh hard to say like if you think of uh florida metal bands there's a lot of those because by all rights metal is metal right but not there's specific kinds but uh, if there's one band i don't know who would that be uh like in the 80s, I didn't like Motley Crue when they first came out, like uh, Too Fast for Love, Shadow of the Devil. Oh, really? But I bet you grew into them, though. Like, So there's something that you probably like now, right? Well, it, with me, it was like always just obstinance because everybody was in the Motley Crue and they made fun of Kiss. Like all the kids made fun of Kiss. I'm like, fuck you, Kiss rules. And of course, that was Kiss's time to be washed up. That's when they had to take off their makeup and all of that. And but then Motley Crue and all these other bands come along, like Wasp, who wear makeup, or at least partial, and then do the stage show that Kiss did, and they're famous. Like, well, why isn't Kiss famous for doing that? Because they were doing it too early, I guess. But Motley Crue, all the, they had everything. They had, like, the satanic imagery. They had the red, mm -hmm. black, the leather, the spikes, the naked girls, all that cool stuff. And mm -hmm. never quite did it for me, but I was also a little bit biased. But then later on, you know, I... Can't remember why, but I bought I, one of my friends lent me his tape of Shout at the Devil. So I listened to it. I'm like, that's pretty good. I mean, it's it, you could hear, even in my untrained ears back then, that it was very rudimentary, very primitive. Like Tommy Lee's drumming was pretty mm -hmm. pedantic, and like Mick Mars playing wasn't really all that great. And you know, you had just Vince Neil was the only singer with the, the you know that <laughs> nasally kind of screech that he does and. Kiss had four different vocalists, so I don't know, I'm like, all right, you know, it's cool, but it's it's kind of eh, you know, but I mean, it's there's some good songs on it. I didn't like their cover of Helter Skelter by the Beatles, but nobody's ever covered that song adequately. Like, I think uh, Joan cool. Jett covered it, maybe, and Susie and the Banshees covered it, and no one's really done it justice. I used to, I used to like, I used to think that was actually a Motley Crue original when I first. Oh, I know, a lot of people did. Like, Mike Kimball thought that. We were at... Uh, <laughs> We were at, uh, what, the Hard Rock Cafe when they had one here in Salt Lake City. We were waiting to sit down because it was, like, jam-packed in there. And then uh, Helter Skelter came on. I'm like, oh, that's cool, Helter Skelter. He's like, what do you mean? What, what's this? I'm like, well, who's this? Is this a cover? I'm like, no, this is the original, dude, the Beatles. He's like, the Beatles? That's a Motley Crue song. I'm like, dude, really? And I got pissed. I just laid into him. And he got kind of pissed off at me because I'm like, dude, you don't know that? And he's like, that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. He's fucking with me. And. I kind of laid into him I'm like, dude, this is like where heavy metal was born, like before Black Sabbath even at Led Zeppelin. This song right here, heavy guitar chords, screaming vocals, dark subject matter, and it actually did spawn like a murder, like real life murders. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's all about killing, and this this is the song, and like this has this dark vocal thing, and like the dark the chorus vocals in the background with the Beatles going ah like that, and. It was just a really dark song and it was just like really heavy on the guitar chops and the screaming vocals and it was just unusual for a band that was also doing oh blah d oh blah da yeah. la, 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 la. you know it was just yeah. the same <laughs> like, what the fuck here comes the sun you know yeah all of that stuff i mean they, they were such an eclectic band but that song i remember hearing that way back when i was like whoa that's dark and that's aside from kiss and stuff from my brother and black sabbath and all of that that's kind of where i 
cut my teeth in the middle. But it was funny because Mike did not know, just like you said. And I know a lot of people who said that they thought Motley Crue wrote that song. I'm like, no, they didn't even do it justice, man. He's like, well, I like Motley Crue's better. I'm like, fuck you. And that's, I think that's where we got into it. And I was like, get out of here, dude. And, uh, I, I had a lot to side with him on that. I think Motley Crue's is better. But I think overall, the Beatles is probably a better, probably a better band, you know? But, well, uh, it's a totally different band, but that song, I'm just telling you, was just so just had it it was like just dark and it was just maybe it was the time in my life when i heard it It was just like what i needed it was just this dark thing like the vocals ah, like the vocals they did in the background like such a weird song in contrast to everything else they did but but i have to say to answer your question um really there's not that many bands i can think of uh I mean, there are in death metal. It's easy to say you have like Swedish death metal. I mean, there's one or two good bands. Then you all the rest come out sounding like that. They check all the boxes, as you say, but they just don't do it for me. They're just doing the same shit. Like, like uh, Dismember is actually one of the oldest Swedish death metal bands, but for some reason with them, it just didn't quite go over with me the way Entomb did it first. And mm. um. I think Entombed had a little bit more of their sound rooted in grindcore and stuff, and as opposed to Dismember, who were just like strictly like coming from straight up just metal, like and it had more solos and more flourishes versus Entombed, who were just kind of yeah. heavier. I think we talked about this because I'm I'm actually struggling with grindcore with um, differentiating like grindcore and death metal because like. I'll listen to like certain bands, you know, I'll be like, this is some badass death metal. And then I'll read the comments and everybody's like calling it grind. And I'm like, what am I missing? Well, you know, uh, well, I not too long ago, I put up a show that we did episode 12. I think we were talking about disordered and wicked innocence. Remember that? Yeah. Uh -huh. And I had well, a actually, thing. I don't remember it. Like, I don't remember anything. Well, before. it was a year ago now, but I just put it up because we've been editing and stuff. But uh, yeah, this year. Um, I, Wicked Innocence used to refer to themselves as grind, and it drove me crazy because you know me, I'm like by the numbers, like everything's got to be perfectly over here, over there, like organized. Like if you're not grind, then you're death metal. If you're not death metal, then you must be thrash. So they kept saying they were grind. I'm like, well, you guys, well, you're not like Napalm Death, like grindy bass and like short, fast songs. You guys are more like just coming from like your roots, like Slayer and stuff. So that's not mm -hmm. grind really, and. That's kind of how this whole thing started with Disordered versus Wicked Innocence. And Disordered, of course, were like totally from the Carcass, Napalm Death, Dead Infection school of music, where it was short, fast stuff, grindy bass. And Matt had to teach their first few bass players how to play the bass that way, because they're like, well, that sounds like shit. And like, that's the point. It's like self fuzzy and distorted. That's what we like about it. And like, no, you can't do that. And no one really quite got it, you know, until he had the, the last guy, John Norton, in the band. He just kind of did what he was told, basically. But um, Utah, back then, it was no one knew anything about that other than what I was playing on the radio. Now it's commonplace, you know. It's mm -hmm. but there's bands. Speaking of grind, I mean, grind comes from the punk ethos of it. We've talked about that. So there's like short, fast songs, angry vocals, low and high vocals. Like they're shouting at you. They're pissed off about everything: racism, the government, war, mm -hmm. corruption. Like, oh, what's that? That was my phone. Sorry. You're getting a call. Is your DoorDash there? No. Oh, yummy. Anyways. Well, anyways. So Grind is like old Napalm Death, like that kind of stuff. And you heard the first Carcass album, the one that the coffee was spilled on the demo tape, or on the real tape. That was mm. kind of more from Grind. But their second one, they came out, they had slower songs, longer songs, less songs, more thought out, more solos. Death metal, you know? And then Napalm Death, same deal. The slower they got, the more they became death metal. They kind of morphed it into both. But there was a band, um, really, for this, what we're talking about, like bands that check all the boxes that mm -hmm. just don't do it for you, was like, there was a band for me called Excruciating Terror. Mm -hmm. And they were from L.A., I think, and they were like super heavy, just grindcore, like grindy bass, shouting vocals. The dudes all had dreadlocks. They were pissed about everything. Grindy bass, just like fast drums, mm -hmm. short songs. But for some reason, I just couldn't get into it. It was like, it was like a blank that was shooting at me i was like well i don't know why that is it's just kind of wasn't there and there's always going to be little bands like that that do death metal where you know you should like it and you try to listen to it and you just like yeah you know not nothing 
not getting yeah. it. Okay, but it's easy so... to do that in death metal because it kind of tends to be the same shit over and over after a while. Like there was a band from Texas called Divine Eve that everybody here liked. I used to play it on my radio show and I didn't get it why everybody loved that band so much. And it was just like Is it just standard boring. death metal or to me it was basic boring death metal, but the everybody else was like, Oh, it's so good, it's so good. I'm like, what's so good about it? You know, and just like we talked about Demolish. Remember that band? Oh yeah. You were telling Amazing. me how good they were. I'm like, I just hear basic Swedish death metal, but they're from Finland, you know? It's just heavy. That still blows my mind that, that that's what you heard. Like, like, oh my gosh. Well, granted, it was a long time ago, and I probably didn't give it a thorough listen, but at first listen, that's all I got out of it was like standard death metal. I and mean, you're all you always get that with those kind of bands, you know? It's not, like, not really, because like I mean, I got like I got into Demolit. I mean, by by the time I, I reached them, like I was pretty much you know pretty familiar with death metal right and they're they're one of those bands that like from like the first like couple of like you know bars of their music i'm like this is twisted this is like some just really crazy different like they were instantly they kind of set apart from everything else i was listening to which might be why you need to check them out again but you know i i can't tell you to check something out when i i don't you know Speaking of which, did you listen to what I sent you? Why not? Because it was we just barely talked last night. Well, I know. I thought you were going to check it out. I well, was I, going to, but I'm also in the... Uh, well, they are. Those are interesting things I think that you're going to like. It's uh, okay. Antimatter uh, is the leftovers or sort of a side project of Anathema, who you were telling me kind of went ambient after a while, but to me it's... They started out as a My Dying Bride kind of band, but then this other project, uh, like it was just death metal with violins and female vocals, but I didn't really get into it. But this band, Antimatter, uh, is like kind of like Massive Attack. It's like got that kind of a feel, like the girl and the guy vocals, like this chill, ambient, trip hop-ish, just kind of laid back rock. It's really good. It's pretty good. Yeah, I, think I could probably give that. Yeah, I can give you that. That's what I sent it to you. I thought you'd like it, plus just knowing it was people from a death metal band. And then uh, I sent you Arcturus, which is guys from Mayhem, Older, and Emperor doing progressive, dark pro progressive metal, which I believe you will I all... Think, I think I've actually heard some Arcturus, but I need to listen to it some more. I, and I don't, I don't remember hating it at all, for sure. They have a Speaking of like kind of like death metal bands that kind of do 180s, uh, did you ever listen to Night Flight Orchestra? Uh, no, that name I've heard that name, but yeah, anyway, yeah. just you should check them out sometime. It's it's uh, members of I think um, Soil Work for sure as members of that band, which is like a melodic like Swedish death metal band. I don't know. I think there's a couple other guys in there. So like it, but it's a combination of like just some extreme metal guys. And they play like really cool, like almost Genesis, like 80s era Genesis style music. And it's really good. You know, if you're into that kind of stuff, you know. Kind of reminds me of like like even like a combination of like Genesis, but even like poppier sounding, like with so imagine like Genesis, old Genesis, but maybe heavier guitars and like Bruce, not Bruce Springsteen, um, Rick Springfield type <laughs> stuff. Corey, yeah, Corey Hart, Rick Springfield, you know, sunglasses at night, Jesse's Girl kind of vibes. Really cool stuff. Rick Springfield was in the Battlestar Galactica movie in 1978. Was he? Was he Charles then? I threw that out to you. He was uh, Captain Apollo's little brother at the beginning of the movie that begged him to go on patrol and show how much of a badass he could be to prove to his big brother that he could be a pilot. And then he got blown up by a Cylon. Hmm. Boom, Jesse's girl. No more. No need to worry about that anymore. In fact, yeah. I'm pretty sure that was before Jesse's girl. So, yeah, what do you think of that? Yeah, well, that's that's good for him, you know. Um, try to look at the night flight. Okay, so you got Bjorn Strid from Soil Work, and then uh, I guess uh, members of Arch Enemy. Uh, da, 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 da. So it's like guy, guys from uh, Soil Work and Arch Enemy, I believe. Ike Amat, who was in Carcass, is he in that? 
No, no, it's like I think it was the bass player of Arch Enemy. His name is Charlie D'Angelo. No idea who that is, but yeah, Michael Michael Lamott was in. Or uh, but yeah, I, Arch Enemy is his main band. He went to Carcass. Spiritual Beggars, right? Yeah, them too, and then he did uh, yeah. that Death Clock band, I think, for a minute. I don't, I don't know, know if it's going to be or... or Death Clock, that's what it was. The cartoon band. The cartoon band. Yeah. No, so, but yeah, so it was the, the bass player, his bass player from Arch Enemy and Spiritual Beggars. But yeah, it's cool. You know, it doesn't sound anything like their other two bands. It's like just really awesome eighties pop rock kind of stuff. With a slightly proggy edge to it. Well, for that matter, um the show I just put up, uh, our last show, uh, number episode thirteen, we were talking about Armored Saint and it was kind of the same thing there. It was just like uh they were good they were heavy and my friend george really loved armored saint he'd always lend me their tapes i'd be like yeah you know it's it's pretty good and he's like you don't like this i'm like no i like it but that doesn't grab me particularly like he thought it was the best thing in the world to me they're like just heavy metal it was good but i didn't really care enough to buy their records even you know it was just i don't know there's something about it that didn't grab me that way and there are those bands. I don't know. I wonder what that is. You know, there's some people who swear by other bands like Dark Tranquility and stuff, and yeah. or other black metal bands like Dark Funeral. That was another one. Like I thought they were kind of boring for a black metal band. I mean, they were good and everything. They had a few good songs, but they didn't really do it for me. It was just like a lot of like just long songs, like ten. Yeah, maybe tell maybe tell the Dark Angel story again. Dark you were Angel. at that show, I think. Weren't you when they opened up for uh, Morbid Angel? Yeah, I was there. I, I remember watching them. They were fun to watch live. They were pretty good. I just their songs just kind of yeah. lose me. It's just I just remember they they had their uh, for a little while like their you know their big banner was upside down, so their upside down crosses were right side up for a minute. So like <laughs> they were they were temporarily a Christian band in Salt Lake City, of course. Yeah. So they went from dark, dark funeral to a uh, striper, and then back to dark funeral. But, um, and speaking okay. of which, like the uh, spring onslaught continues here. Like every night I log in the Facebook, which is basically every night before I go to bed, there's more concerts coming. Like two or three a night. It's like unreal. Like, I know it, it literally is like I, I must have been the the dam that. I don't get it because it's literally like the time you left, like the to the day that you left, like we were going to go to maybe see suffocation, but then you ended up moving pretty quickly. And then like right. all of a sudden there's just all these shows. Park, just suffocation, Monomarth again. Yeah. Now, there's more. There's like tons. Of, I think obituary is coming back. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, aborted was just here. It's immolation. Yeah, I, did, oh, I like, wish I could have seen that. What is amazing. going on? Like everybody is touring and they're all coming here. It's like usually they skip us like, the only band I know yeah. of has not come here so far is Morbid Angel that's touring, and Susie mm -hmm. and the Banshees are touring. I don't know if they're coming or not, because there's a lot of goth and industrial shows coming, too. It's like, well, and what's what's crazy is they're, they're hitting Salt Lake, they're skipping Las Vegas. Actually, speaking of oh, which, well. tonight is Skinny Puppy, and we're missing Skinny Puppy. <laughs> so. Well, you're missing them. I'm not missing them. Well, they're not one of my... See, that's another one. It's like Skinny Puppy, they're like largely considered the godfathers of industrial music, but to me, that would be like swans and godflesh because they were doing it like way back when but then so was skinny puppy like it was just a different style mm -hmm. and they're good i have most of their early records but like that doesn't really just kind of doesn't really do it for me it's like yeah you know i can take it or leave it and when i hear it i'm like oh this yeah i probably don't need to hear this ever again kind of like with you and judas priest breaking the law and another thing coming it's like i've heard this song and i want to hear it again for a couple of years stop and so they're good. They're like they're hugely influential and everything, but uh, they weren't really. They're not something I always go to. But then um, they did have in their band uh, Bill Lieb, who, before they even became famous, they kicked him out. And he formed Frontline Assembly, who mm -hmm. were also just here, whose drummer yeah. you look like, but is slightly more buff and tattooed and black hair. But so he doesn't really so, look so like. Not, so not at all. <laughs> <laughs> He's no got that worries. face. He's got the Mark Hansen face. And like he was way into the music, just headbanging, playing his drums. But 
Oh, they had kind of a tribal setup. It was really cool. Frontline Assembly is, I think, by far and wide, much better than Skinny Puppy. Like they have so many side projects, but then so does Skinny Puppy. But you, you, know, were, you were telling me it was uh, Tim Skuld was playing guitar for Frontline. He was Assembly. indeed your boy from Shotgun Messiah. Yeah. It was kind of funny because I forgot all about that until I went there. I'm like, oh shit, that's right, that Tim Skuld guy. And he's also in that band cyclone nine which is an industrial band with black metal vocals and they were coming here but they canceled like the day before their show i was going to go to that too and uh right now it's ministry gary newman and uh frontline assembly on tour and that was a really really good show i was glad i went to that one was, who's gary like who's gary newman gary newman's the guy of course he'll never live this down he does here in my car da, da, cars da, 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 Oh, you know that song. vaguely, yeah. Here in my car. Uh, da, da, da. No, 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 no. Okay. It's been on like commercials, everything. And he yeah. out, of course, he has to play it live. But really, that was not the focal point of his set. It was like in the middle of his set. Hmm. He's got a lot of other songs, and it's just really good. He's like a pioneer, like, new part wave. Part of the industrial new wave. Or... Yeah, kind of industrialish new wave, like synth rock, like dark wave. Dark wave is probably the best way to explain it, but. Uh, it was a really good show, to be honest with you. I went to see Frontline Assembly more than anybody, and they were good. But the one that really blew me away, I was surprised, was Gary Newman. Like, yeah. really, really good show. The music was good. It was tight. It was just really powerful. It probably has something to prove, you know? Like, you know, when, when you do get, like, huge for something like that, like, uh, you know, kind of he's a mediocre. Games, you know, he's, been, he's, he's like the veteran there. I mean, they're all, all those bands are old school, but Gary Newman's been around a lot longer he's like from the 70s like he used to have a band called uh two-way army i think mm -hmm. and they they were the same thing that kind of music and then he broke off and did his own and he had i remember seeing him on saturday night live and he played cars it was like 1979 mm -hmm. i think and i remember well, seeing and him live because it didn't quite have that electronic sound i was like oh it was a real drummer it sounds like a machine you know and that's what I'm saying. Like, like he probably is trying to like sort of, you know, people are going to go see him. It's almost like you know, extreme with more than words, right? He it's wants to, you know, how like extreme got huge with more than words. No idea. But as we've said before, only you like that band out of every, anybody on the planet. But yeah, nobody else likes extreme. You, you and Dustin, crazy that they're still, they're somehow Dustin able to survive and tore it off just me. What's that? Dustin Mitchell and you. That's the only people Extreme makes records for. Like, no one else ever buys their records. Yeah, exactly. I'm literally, like, every time I've been to a record store in the 80s, like, I always saw Extreme Porno Graffiti sitting there on the shelf. Always. Like, right. I have never heard that band ever. To this day, I've never heard them other than you talking about them and Dustin. But that's it. Like, I know. And they were like uh, oh. Racer X. They're like another band I always saw who turned out to be pretty decent, you know? But, yeah. But I just kind of was like, all right, whatever. Because in the 80s, it was like the thrash thing happened, and then it kind of petered out. He started to have, like, the glam thing. That petered out. And then he had all those bands who were either just plain heavy metal that didn't have a direction, or it was washed up glam, but they were doing the the glitzy, like, the nasty shit, like uh, Guns N' Roses, like or what Celtic Frost did with Cold Lake. But mm -hmm. And that's why, and going back to Grindcore, that's why I discovered Grindcore one day, and it just exploded in my face and it was like a whole new scene and from there we got death metal and then from that black metal came up again and industrial joined in and the fray and now we have uh billy eilish unfortunately so yeah i don't know <laughs> i don't want to get let me ask you a question well. about that what do you think about that that was a controversy a while ago that she either said or people think she was faking it but she said she didn't know who van halen was but she knew the song "Hot" like, or something like, and everybody gave her shit. What do you think about that? Is that? I'm not shocked. Like, I mean, it, it's it's like you not knowing who Extreme is, you know? Like, well, I'd seen them around, but I mean, I know yeah, she's probably are. seen Van Halen around. She, she was acting probably... like she's probably never heard that song. And everybody, yeah. What do you think about everybody giving her shit about that though? I think it's dumb. Like, she's like what, 13 years old? Like, of course she's never heard Van Halen. I mean, yeah, that's probably. That, I mean, that is true, and you got to consider Van Halen has even had their music re-released digitally, or or not digital, yeah. but like remastered. Like they've never done anything. Yeah, yeah and, like, and you listen to her music, you, like the, you know, you listen to her music. 
there's no way she even listened to rock growing up. You know what I mean? Yeah, she's yeah, that's, completely just like, why are pop you getting mad about? So nothing to get mad about <laughs> over. It's like whatever. I'm, it's like I'm not being forced to listen to her stuff, you know. And, she's and whatever, of, you know. She seemed to do. She seems to be doing well for herself. So fine. Isn't she pretty much already gone? Like fade into the mist of time? Like I haven't heard people talking about her in a couple of years now. Yeah, she's uh, she's she's probably reaching that point where she has to do some kind of controversial like the like actually know, like, make real music perhaps or like well no like kind of do the miley cyrus thing you know do some like whatever you know miley cyrus is a joke that was just do, stupid. do some like nude stuff or or come out as you know non-binary or something like that you know just get her get people talking again you know, but that might have even been like the Van Halen thing. That might have been a calculated thing just to get people talking. You're like, can you believe this? Maybe, but I mean, why, that's kind of like something lame to put out there. Like, why would you? And none of that. But Van Halen's like, why would you pick Van Halen? Like, instead of Iron Maiden, like Van Halen has been so redundant for years now. They haven't done shit. Except because for- Van Halen has like the, uh, the um, uh, what, what's her name? Poker face girl. Lady Gaga. Yeah, they have the Lady Gaga connection. Like, Lady Gaga is a huge Maiden fan. Um, and also a fan of sex. And oddly enough, just like pictures of her with Biff Bifford and stuff. Like, So she's like a legit fan of like some of that early new wave of British heavy metal. Yeah. Well, I've so always. You, so, you don't, you, so, like, uh, Billie Eilish doesn't want to piss off Lady Gaga, of course, because they're in that, you know. They're in the same well, you trench. Compare stuff, compare stuff like like Kelly Clarkson, Katy Perry, Billie Eilish. All those girls, they seem like they just have someone write their songs, write their lyrics. They have programmed mm-hmm. drums, hired musicians, and that's it. Lady mm-hmm. Gaga writes her own fucking lyrics, sings her own fucking I'm, songs, writes her music, has real people playing real instruments. I think, so believe it or not, I think I think Billie Eilish. I could be wrong, but I think she writes her own songs i think she writes them with her brother like he, her brother like programs like the beats or something like that and she writes everything well i mean so that's they, something i mean whatever but I, I don't know it's just i think yeah, people have lost their way today like with everything and i always compare wrestling to music but wrestling's the same way I, I used to love wrestling the stuff that's on tv now i do not watch because it's the same thing it's like overproduced glitzy glammy bright brightly produced rich aesthetically just yeah, bland, no, like no just grind, paint. no no grit. And it's happening yeah. with metal too. You know, there's a lot of those tech bands, and you know, I've told you before, like, like that's a lot of times my complaint is that it's just too pristine, too perfect. It sounds yeah, too good. Metal you know? is supposed to be dirty. It's supposed to be dirty, nasty. It's not even supposed to be necessarily dirty. It's supposed to be human, though. Like it's supposed well, that's to how sound. It's oh, organic. that's how it yeah. started. Oh, you know, it's right. And, like it, and you can do that. You can still play like technical shit and clean and everything, but but still sound human. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and I think I don't know if it has to do with like the technology. It's just too easy to clean shit up and snap it into grid or, no, or I what. Think- I think the biggest thing right now is like it seems like there's like a culture, quote unquote, of kids who are like so into like doing their music and doing it so tightly, so pristinely, so intricately, so technically that that's what they're about. Like it's it's like a thing to see how far. Well, yeah. shit. well and you have to you have to kind of always like um, and it's hard to put yourself in this situation. But so you think about like how, you know, someone like me. Or you got into like extreme metal, right? You had to start. You started off with like the basics, right? Judas Priest, you know, Van Halen, and then it got heavier and heavier, right? Until you're finally able to listen like Deicide or, or, um, you know, Carcass or whatever, you know. But these kids are literally like jumping right into that. Like that's like imagine if your first exposure to metal was like. Uh, cryptopsy or something you know what i mean like where do you go from there yeah (laughs) Yeah, well that might be the thing you know that's it's but you know i'm just saying that like the trajectory is is not the same anymore you discovered death metal through dream theater i mean who who can say that (laughs) i mean in a roundabout way you know it was like dream theater that's and like I saying I, I almost never got into a steakhouse and had their good side their potatoes. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay. Well, I I almost 
skipped over Dream Theater because I remember a, a review of their album, uh, Images and Words, where they described some of the riffs as Metallica style riff, riffs, right? And back then, Metallica was too heavy for me, right? I thought Metallica was like just too noisy, <laughs> too, too extreme. So that gives, you, that gives you an idea. Of, to, before you go any further, are you talking about like Injustice for All or later or like Ride the Lightning? I'm, I'm talking like uh, Black Album and earlier. So that like was too noisy shows. for you? That was too thrashy, too heavy, dude. Oh, man. Too scary for me. So that's you where really I was at in high girl. school yeah. when I discovered Dream Theater. <laughs> but I gave him a chance. So and then a lot of it was like, OK, so I'm reading like the liner notes of Images and Words. So I fall in love with that album. Oh, which one? I'm like, OK, uh, Images and Words, right? What's that? That's Dream Theater? That's their that's the the uh, that's not their first album. They had an album before that, but with a different singer. But that that was their uh, second album. And that's the one they took off on. You know, that's where they really blew up. Um. But, you know, I'm reading like the liner notes I'm, and I'm looking, listening, you know, they're listing bands, you know, there's even some hardcore bands that they thanked on there, like Propane. I guess they were huge. I guess they were buds with that band. Um, but like, that's where I discovered Watchtower because they think Watchtower. I'm like, oh, check out Watchtower. And did that you was like uh, Joe Satriani? I'm sure you did. Yeah, yeah as a guitar player, you kind of so you know now to me like i used to check out his records way back in the day like when i first started buying cds and cds were still kind of new i finally got a cd player mm -hmm. um, my first cd was pink floyd metal that my mom and dad bought me strangely enough i don't think they had a clue what it was but i bought uh, joe satriani because it was the only thing i found at like the store i was at and i wanted to buy a cd and it was surfing with the alien i was like this is like happy sounding. It's like really produced and clean and clinical. And the drums aren't even real drums. They're like just drum machine. They even said drum programming in the credits. Yeah. I'm like, this is okay, but this isn't really, this isn't my thing. Like, this is just like really, it's like commercial music, like for commercials or something. It was like, mm -hmm. And like his next album, uh, Flying in a Blue Dream, where he started doing vocals, it was like a little better. There were a couple of cool songs on there. Like I Can't Slow Down or like The Big Bad Moon. All those songs were pretty cool. And Overall, though, it just wasn't my thing. It's just so clean. And now it's like a, it mm -hmm. must be a guitarist thing because you guys are so into like clean, clinical, clear precision, mm -hmm. like showing your wear. Whereas me as a drummer, maybe, I guess, is just like, fuck it. Boom, 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 boom. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's weird because, like, I mean, I like Joe Santriani, but I'm far from like a fanatic. You know, um, I got really into Steve Vai for a while. Um, no, I forgot to tell you, we talked about the Ghost of Mars soundtrack so long ago because I loved it because it was instrumental like thrash basically with Anthrax, but it featured Buckethead. But guess what? I forgot to tell you that Steve Vai is also on that soundtrack. I forgot. The Ghost of Mars? Yeah, I'm telling you, listen to that. You keep like avoiding or like forgetting or something, but I'm telling you, you're going to love that record. Steve Vai, Buckethead, Bucket and Baker, Anthrax. the old blues musician, John Carpenter, and Anthrax. I like John Carpenter, it's so okay, yeah, I can really heavy. So I was, I always think about like that uh, Big Trouble in Little China had such a cool soundtrack. And that's John all just got John Carpenter on a synth. It sounds the same when you really watch all of his movies. It's all kind of got oh, yeah. the same kind of bluesy vibe, and that's all right. But this Blues, this movie kind of like synth way, like, like, totally different. It's like it's like a steamroller, and like I remember seeing it in the theater. I'm like, what is that music? That's so badass, and. You just see all these people like just killing aliens and shooting people and hacking each other's arms and shit off and just crazy shit. And it's it's to the it's to the music. I'm like fuck yeah, it was Anthrax. I'm like wow. Because I wonder why like metal hasn't been used. Huh? I wonder why metal hasn't been used more for like soundtracks. Like it should have been because it worked really well with that movie. But I can totally works well. People would be into it, but it really worked with that movie. But that movie wasn't like the greatest movie in the world, obviously. But for what it was, that music was awesome. It was just, and it was at that time in the '90s when I kind of everybody gave up on Anthrax. They were just doing like rock, basically, like that the John Bush years, you know. And yeah, I'm not a fan of that soundtrack. I'm telling you, it's fucking insane. It's so okay. good. They do a few Kiss covers from around that era too that are really good, like for the Kiss compilation. Um, things like that. I mean, it's. Kiss this. Like that. What's that? 
Kiss This, I think was the name of that compilation, right? It was one called Kiss My Ass. It was put out by Kiss. Like, they had an eclectic band of people on it, like Garth Brooks and... Yeah, like the... Uh, there's, there's like the official Japanese classical composer Garth Brooks was on it, and Anthrax played She, the mm. Kiss song. She walks by moonlight. Da, 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 da. It was a really good cover. Uh, most of that album sucked though. That uh, that Kiss My Ass record, but that was a good song. But anyway, yeah, Buckethead, um, Bucket Baker, and Steve Vai, and Ghost of Mars soundtrack alongside Anthrax and John Carpenter, totally worth getting. I'm just going to see if it's on uh, uh, YouTube Music here. I'm sure. Well, maybe. I don't know. It's a soundtrack, so it's going to be kind of tricky to find. It's probably listed under John Carpenter, not Anthrax. Oh, there it is. John Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars. Hell yeah. All right, that's Byron Rand. Let's see. I'm going to type in soundtrack. Hold on a sec. There we go. Soundtrack. There it is. Go to Mars, John Carpenter, Love Seas, John Carpenter, Fight Train. Everything's John Carpenter. Well, it's all under him, but it's fucking Anthrax, and I'm telling you. It's okay, so, so he's got, okay. All right, I'll check that out. It's on my... Uh... So anyway, um, we were also talking last night on the phone about uh, David Vincent is actually God, and that he's blessing you. Yeah, no, I forgot kidding. why. <laughs> No, no, we were talking about, possible. you were saying it seems like a lot of extreme metal bands tend to go prog because I was also telling you how good the Dodd Heimsgard new, uh, the video clip is for Black Medium Current, I think is what it was called. I think they're singing about British uh, fruit preserves. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's a really good song. Um, really good song, really good video. I we, remember we talked about Mobius' artwork and stuff, and I had explained to you for like the better part of 45 minutes who Mobius was, but. Um, yes. But the the music, I put that on your Facebook page. Check out the video if you don't want to watch it. Listen to it. It's a really, okay. really good song. What, was that Mobius? On it's not Facebook? Mobius, but I compare that artwork style to Mobius because there is a certain unique style that Mobius has that is very 70s European. Like I, Maybe some people don't know what I'm talking about, but I think most people, if you're into art, kind of get what I mean. But um, it, it, regardless of the art, the music is insane. It's fucking great. It's so good. Like I okay. keep thinking of that album just came out. So, I got a copy. Yeah, Dode Himsgard, yeah. PhD for I guess short. Yep. Abyss Perihelion. Yeah, that's it. This, yeah, it's taken from fucking black good. medium. Not black medium current. It's black medium current. That's what I said. Yeah. So it's not the fruit. It's not the berry. Like current. Oh, it's current. Yeah, you're thinking yeah, of current. Here with that. Current is like I guess he's like you know, current is <laughs> right now, you know. Well, anyways, up to, up to date. I always love when you see a band that you kind of never really paid attention to, and they were just kind of generic, and they suddenly come up and surprise you like that because to, I'd never heard their stuff. But from what I know, it was this pretty standard black metal featuring umpteen different guys from umpteen different bands in Norway who are all of them were doing that at that time, having other projects come out. Mm -hmm. I never actually heard their stuff, so I can't really say for sure what they did. They were likened as techno black metal, but I don't think that they were, or at least there wasn't yeah. much to that. But this song is like, it's wow. I haven't heard the rest of the album. I, I got to hear it, but I'm going to buy it regardless. The DHG, like the one you posted. Such a good song. Well, speaking of that, though, you didn't even watch my uh, uh, attempted Winger cover. You sent me the video of Winger. Oh, I got it. I, well, I know, but I was learning the song, and I still kind of sloppily played it, but I, I played it. Well, I'll make a deal with you. Send me that video, and I'll watch it as soon as you listen to all the stuff I sent you. How's that? And then we'll talk about it next show. Okay. Well, I'll send it to you right now. I'll do that. Okay, Mark. <laughs> I'll send you the I'll send you the link to me and then and then you tell me about you know the uh, uh, the Metallica connection you know how Metallica threw darts at Kip Winger yeah we talked about that the last time we yeah. recorded two weeks ago and then two years later like after Winger's album comes out they come out with their album but I found out that you can play Inner Sandman over Winger's 17 and it fits <laughs> Sort of. So who copied who on that? Well, I've told you, Winger's album came out in like '87, and 
and the black or 88 and the black album didn't come out until 90 91 so do you think they really did that or is that just no it's a fucking joke it's a joke but i did it anyways it still fits like you can actually squeeze in uh inner sandman over the the beat to 17 but it's a like it's a different key and everything but but it works like i can just you can go like how does that go She's only 17. Oh, I can't. You know, that can't reminds me of what you said a while ago. That you should have a metal, like a hard metal band do a glam cover and a glam band do a hard metal cover. And I'm now, I thought it was dumb at first, but I think maybe that's a good idea now. Yeah, I mean, so like I imagine hear James like, Hetfield going 17. Yeah. 17. Or, have them, yeah, have them write their Dang, own, like, kind of. But I wanted to actually do like extreme metal bands, so like have have a band. No, like... I gotta. Let me ask you this: What do you think? I mean, now that you know Metallica's career and how it unfolded, what do you think of the Black Album? Because everybody hated it when it came out, and they got. <laughs> I never hated shit. that album. Guys like me, basically. I I didn't really give them shit for that one, but I didn't. I was past that. I was far, far in the grindcore yeah. and death metal. And I, and honestly, I think I think that's why a lot of people gave them shit is because a lot of people that were into Metallica had moved on to like you know maybe more death metal type stuff well to um, me it was like it was just there i didn't like hate him for it I, it was a little bit more polished and a little bit more mainstream but the, i gotta I mean, admit when pandora is playing and enter sandman comes on that's a fucking good song it's got some hooks you gotta admit oh and holier than thou that's a great song and the video's cool i mean it's just them playing but yeah they're newer shit like load and all of that that was horrendous yeah, i didn't it's care for the load stuff which is weird because it's not one of those situations where load actually might be good if it was under a different name you know what i mean um but no i like the black album the black album is fine so load was there uh cold lake yeah load lake um <laughs> cold load but uh uh what was i gonna say like the production like on that album is a benchmark kind of album like so on many what, albums black album? after, yeah so many so many heavy bands after that like like that that that's still like the standard of like hard rock production you know it's well, just perfect it's probably it's, also because it, is, it was a solid hard rock album that came out in the middle of all the grunge stuff which is funny yeah. when you do i have an alice and chain station on pandora and it plays ender sandman all the fucking time and master of puppets strangely enough which is famous because of uh stranger things now but oh uh, yeah i played master i remember of uh Danny Lilker from Nuclear Assault came out in the press like in the 90s and like defended Metallica. He said, everybody's talking shit about the Black Album. I think it's a killer, man, from start to finish. And, yeah, no, it's just, it's, it's probably like a perfect rock metal album. It really is. Um, you know, but I'm, yeah, I mean, I'll admit I like their earlier stuff better. You know, it's, it's, well, to me, like it was probably a natural progression after mm -hmm. uh, and justice for all because i didn't even like that album i, I was like man nah, this isn't my my thing like sorry guys and yeah. that's also me because i was getting into heavier shit and moving on to european thrash like creator but when that came out everybody else got into metallica which also pushed people away from it mm -hmm. and also like cliff burton had just died too so they probably were lost oh, okay. probably just like what are we doing you know and that's why the black album was probably so good for them because it came back and it was like this tight, like punch in the face. It was a very cohesive album. album. Yeah, extremely cohesive. Yeah. I that don't own that cool. record. I still have not heard everything on it. I've only heard like the hits from it, like Unforgiven and all of that. But well, there's some like, cool deep cuts cool. on it. Like, What's the that? Deep cuts, the deep cuts are really good on it, like, and are as good as anything, you know, from the earlier stuff, if you ask me. Enter Sandman is like a good solid rock song. I got to say, when I'm mm -hmm. when I'm at work in the kitchen, I don't play like blasting death metal, at least not earlier anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'll put on like a, a metal station or, or, you know, or something like that. And if that song comes on, I'm like, man, this sounds really good with all this other yeah. stuff around it. You know, it's not a bad song. And <laughs> it used to be like, I, I, I'd never play that on my radio show. But I remember some of the other guys who did shows back then that were in the Metallica played it anyway, like. People would call up and ask me to play. I'm like, nah, I don't have that one. I got Fight Fire with Fire if you want to hear that. Yeah. No, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those, like, Metallica haters, really. 
you know, and even like load or reload, I think at that point you, you kind of earn the right to just sort of whatever, try whatever they want. It's and also kind of funny. It just seems to have turned out that they were kind of right about the whole Napster thing, even though at first everyone thought they were complete fucking douchebags, yeah. me included. I was like, you fuckers. And oh, yeah. Now I'm like, uh, I own a record label. So I'm like, yeah, they were kind of right about that, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> they were. You know, people are still mad at them for that. You know, it's just like, dude. Well, not really. I mean, if you download a track just to hear it, that's one thing. But if you're just getting the whole record and like, fuck it, I don't want to buy it. Is it free? Then. Go fuck yourself, you know. But unfortunately, yeah. it's not going away that shit anytime soon. But yeah. someone at work was telling me about another platform coming up, like Spotify, the same exact mm -hmm. thing that they actually pay the bands. Like, do you know about that? I hate it because, like, I was thinking about that like a year ago. Like, what if there's a way to like have a platform where the listener actually kind of gets to, like, where the subscription that the listener does, right? is divided amongst the bands that he listens to you know what i mean rather I can't than remember what he told me but i think it was something there was a, a catch to it like that sort of i didn't really pay attention yeah, i hate it because i was thinking about I was like there's got to be a way and then i was like okay you know someone pays like ten dollars a month for a subscription that ten dollars should be like divided amongst strictly among the bands that that person listened to you know what i mean and then whatever left I is covering what over him. I, I can't remember who what he said it was or what company but i think it was something more akin to that like instead I of hate that i hate that someone's come out with it like why something like that i like well, it's just like an idea i had like years ago i'm like it's gotta well, be a way gotta get on it man i know especially stuff well, like that like an internet yeah. anything digital based yeah. with music it's like that's why even if you haven't already thought of it you know i i think of jokes okay here's and i Google here's, here's the it. next thing here's the next thing in, in copyright this idea or whatever because i came up with it but uh, the next platform or one of the the next like big platforms is going to be uh music that's that has a hundred percent guarantee that it's not ai generated right you said that. What are we talking about? What is AI generated music? Computer generated, like literally algorithmic music written by a computer. Like what kind of music? Like is that what every say, music, Billie every Eilish music is doing, or what? What are we talking no, about? No, I'm just saying that people are going to start doing that, and oh yeah, and 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 it goes with movies and books, like all art. Like there's going to be a niche for art that is not AI created you know and there's going to need to be some kind of like authenticity yeah like you know there's i'm the kind of person that's like you know what i need to know that it's being made by humans so there's whoever can figure out how to authenticate art that it's made by a human being and not by a uh, ai so is that why you don't like industrial music because it's so much more synthesized and programmed no no, I mean, because it's still like the compositions are still human. I'm talking music written by a computer. Oh, I'm, yeah, I know. But. Hard to say, like AI art, like I had that app on my phone, like every time I get one, it's fun to use for a minute and then it kind of starts to get wacky and just starts to suck and then I just get rid of it. But I've had a couple of cool things, but now there's a controversy because there's this girl hey. I'm friends with on Facebook. She's, of course, she's from France. She's a legit artist. Like she loves painting, modeling, designing clothes, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And she's furious about AI because I guess apparently what AI does is it just goes around the internet and takes like a little piece of a puzzle out of each piece of art it finds when you say skull. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it takes a skull like from all these different artists and puts it together and makes it. Like micro. So I'm like, well, I've had this cool stuff. And it just, when I say skull, it comes up with all these crazy different styles. And they're, some of them are really cool and some are just stupid. But right. I'm like, so really, this is just like extrapolations of a couple of different people's artwork and it put it together. Is that what it is? Well, I think it is. I think, <laughs> yeah, it just crawls the internet. And... That's what she's saying. And she's like, absolutely pissed off at it. Of course, it's a girl from France leading the charge. How, you know, how appropriate, but. Is it? Um, 
I don't yeah, know. So. I don't know what to say because I I have never seen these pictures anywhere, and I tried to Google skulls, you know, and like all you really ever get is just like the stupid drawings of like the the biker skull or like the monster energy, like with the hey, 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 like the eyes, the, the nasty mean looking skull eyes that are like cartoonish, and you don't see anything like the shit that I came up with. So I'm like, well, did I really do this through AI or is it? Mm-hmm. Just a hack job from somebody's stuff that I haven't seen. <laughs> just... well, I mean, it, it. I mean, it, you know, it may, in some ways, that's like legit because if you think about any art that's created, right? Any song, like for example, any riff that I write, is just taking a piece of everything I've listened to, right? So there's a little bit of rap, Van Halen, whatever, in whatever I write. You know, so I'm kind of doing the same thing as AI is. I'm just not able to do it as fast and as, you know, as So you're really just going to take like a lick or two from each heavy metal band. If I put in AI, like mm-hmm. classic 80s metal, it's going to take like a piece of rad, a piece of extreme, a piece well, of kiss. My, my problem is, is it's probably going to write a very good song. And it's going to fill all, it's just going to be disappointing because it's not written by a human, but it might be great. It might be the greatest music I've ever heard because it's algorithmically ticking every box and writing it exactly as I'd want to hear it. But there's something just yeesh, kind of creepy about that to me. Kind of wrong. Well, but, you're anyway. probably right. I am right. You are right. Yeah. All right. Should we call it? But we didn't talk about Cold Lake. Cold Lake's awesome. There we go. We talked about it. That is not awesome. Give it another shot. No, oh, it's going to be, I'm telling you, like I said, maybe it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to be one of those ones that's going to be revered eventually. You know, there was another show I was listening to that we did. I can't remember. I think it's already up. But I talked about how they probably are going to do a box set of Cold Lake and its follow-up, Vanity Nemesis. Mm-hmm. But I kind of doubt it. I doubt it because he absolutely despises that album, everything it was and what it did to his career, and rightfully so. But at the end of the day, like, you know, maybe he'll be like, eh, fuck it, whatever. Here, well, instead of When he starts, like, reading people suddenly start, like, when it, like, gets a second sort of life he'll he'll change this to you i don't know know? maybe maybe not suddenly suddenly people start liking it and he's like what the hell and then he'll go back and listen to it like i guess i was this is not too bad i'm not giving myself enough credit Hmm. maybe maybe i i kind of doubt it though because i think he's realizes he has an image to uphold as the god the godfather of black metal so we'll see Hmm. Time shall tell. Yeah. Besides, a lot of black metal guys are kind of, they're not being so grim and frostbitten. Like, who is it? We talked about it. Um, Dark Throne. That guy's way into, like, he's just a goofball, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, he, He freely admits he loves, like, 80s glam metal. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of no, that. No he used to wear cowboy boots and cowboy hats and stuff all the time. So, you know. Yeah. If you watch uh, Lords of Chaos, the movie, it, you can all tell who the guy they intended Fenris to be because he's wearing cowboy boots. And they'll never call him Gilv or Fenris or anything like that. But he's the guy with cowboy boots. I'm like, oh, that must be Fenris because I know that he wore cowboy boots. I heard that long ago, like from some of the bands in Sweden that would come through town way back when. But. Back when we had like four or five concerts every four years, <laughs> not like there the two hundred like three months. Ozzy wrote a song called "Fenris Wears Boots." What? Yeah. You're saying he should do that, or he did do that? I thought he did. Fenris wears boots, and you gotta believe me. Well, Fenris is a a Nordic like wolf creature, so maybe that's what Ozzy's talking about, but. I'm just kidding. I was talking about fairies wear boots, damn it. Oh. Making a joke. You know, <laughs> Black if you shadow. think you're going to make a joke like that and then like waltz off of the air and off this show, I'm going to tell yeah. you something right now, mister. I'm right. 
You are wrong in a world full of rights. That's right. Of course, it's the other way around. Like it's like going sane in a crazy world, man. All right, so send me your winger attempt video, and then in the turn, I will watch it. You watch all mine that I sent you, including the records I sent you. God damn it! I texted it to you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ooh, along with the nude photo too. Yeah. How do I rate? Wow, and you're on the you're on the Vegas Strip too. Like right. Don't miss that there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what? We never did say this is Medley Challenge with Mark Las Vegas Strip Hansen and J.R. Tarina, the Master Butcher. Bye. Bye bye. Are you All done? Right, yeah, we're done.